Oh, it's been a while. I'm really glad to be back, though. What day is it? Oh, god damn it. I missed Pride. First, I was putting out the Pride kickoff video. Then I was on vacation. Then I had COVID. And before I knew it, god, June just passed me right by. I have two months I look forward to all year. One of them is... Which I guess I'll have to do up real big this year. And the other is pride. There's so many things I wanted to talk about this pride. But you know what? It's not too late. It's, it's never too late, right? I, I can cover all of them if I do it in this video, right? Yeah, sure. I, I got this. I can, I can do this. Okay, first off, we have a local news story that was quite depressing. Part of Twin Falls drag story time canceled. That actually happened right as I was getting home from vacation. My conservative town was going to have a drag queen story time at our local Barnes & Noble, but then the bad guys heard about it. The cancellation came as a response from Barnes & Noble following a salute of calls and emails from citizens complaining about the event. There are two angles I want to come at this from. I'm not sure which is worse or which I want to start with. I guess first I'll talk about the kind of people who got this shut down. You could have just stayed home that day. No one was trying to make you go. No one was trying to make you take your kids. People were just trying to have this event who wanted to attend. If you called or emailed about this or any kind of similar situation to complain, to try to get rid of it, get it shut down, you have absolutely no right to say that we're pushing an agenda, that there's a gay agenda. You have no right to say you're oppressed, which I know is something people love to claim. You're the oppressors. LGBT people were trying to do something that didn't have absolutely anything to do with you whatsoever, and you took so much issue with that that you ripped it from them. That said, those are the kinds of people Barnes & Noble chose to appease this month. They should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. Event organizers say they are concerned about the message the cancellation will send, and you know what they should be. The message that it's sending is that Barnes & Noble cares more about the opinions of a few small-minded bigots who are very clearly on the wrong side of history than it does about making sure queer people in small communities and conservative areas know that they are seen, that they are valid, and that it's okay to be them. You told all the children in Twin Falls that it's okay to say yes to hate, and that just might not be okay to be gay. Fuck that. And honestly, fuck you for that, Barnes & Noble. This is telling kids in an area where they already feel like they don't fit in, that they should feel like they don't fit in. That the voice of hate is louder than the voice of love. It's not, just for the record. I've seen the voice of love for LGBT people in this town. It is a lot louder than the voice of hate. All right, next up, we have Postmates coming under fire for some uh, unexpected reasons. This one's a lot more lighthearted, which is good because all the other stories today are heavy. Let's look at the controversial ad. What are you eating this pride? Well, if you're a top, it seems like you can eat whatever you want. But if you're a bottom, you're expected to starve? Not this pride. Introducing the bottom-friendly menu from Postmates. Huh? We teamed up with Dr. Evan Goldstein from Bespoke Surgical to bring you a menu of bottom-friendly foods backed by science. A bottom-friendly menu seems a little much. Like, it reinforces the idea that sexuality is just about sex. I get it from that angle. It's a little weird, for sure. But... I don't hate it. I think they did pretty well for one. Telling what foods would be good for anal without making it overly gross or shameful or anything of the sort. Insoluble fiber won't help you feel cute. So avoid things like whole grains, wheat bran, cauliflower, potatoes, legumes. Hold up. Are you just fully diving into those beans? <laughs> The problem with these foods is they don't dissolve in water, which could cause a traffic jam in your digestive system, making a mess of your evening. Soluble fibers and protein are the key to having some good, clean fun. These all digest easily and slowly while feeding your good gut bacteria. It's certainly no more sexual than some of the straight ads we've seen. Sexuality isn't all about sex, but sex is a part of it. Sex is very often a part of romantic or sometimes casual relationships. Hell, sometimes it's a part of friendships. It's a part of life in general. We shouldn't be forced to hide the fact that we're sexual creatures, those of us who are, just because some of the ignorant like to make it seem like queers are all perverts just for existing as who we are. LGBT people are just as sexual as straight people and that's fine. That is absolutely 
perfect. There was also a related controversy here saying that they stole the idea of a bottom friendly menu from a TikToker who made a whole account off the idea. But I honestly think it's a vague enough idea that you really can't say it was stolen. I've searched up what foods are good for anal with absolutely no mention of queerness in the past. It's information people have always needed and always found a way to find. I just don't think it's specific enough of an idea to really be stolen like that. But I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments what you think of the whole thing. Is the ad tasteless and weird? Does it help destigmatize gay sex? Was the idea really stolen? Just let me know. What we have last is the mother of all stories from the month of June. Roe v. Wade is now a thing of the past. Shade, what the hell do abortion rights have to do with pride? Everything. Now shut the fuck up and listen. First of all, I'm queer as shit and I can get pregnant. A lot of queer people can get pregnant. And a lot of us are with people who can get us pregnant. Also, pride is about rights. That's why we all kind of made the 2020 Black Lives Matter protest our pride celebration a couple years back. Celebration really isn't the right word here, but COVID's still messing with my head a little, so I can't think of the right word off the top of my head. On top of that, have we forgotten how pride started? Pride started as a riot because for some godforsaken reason, human rights aren't given freely. They're fought for and they're taken by force. History has taught us that again and again. That's not to say I agree with any kinds of calls to violence. My friends and I briefly privately discussed if we felt it appropriate. I just, I don't. Some of my friends are even saying they think it might be necessary and I just, I still, I just don't like violence. Someone I know compared the trolley problem to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is tied to one side and thousands and thousands of innocent people are tied to the other. But the Supreme Court tied everyone down, including themselves, and is continuing to tie everyone down despite also being tied down. And the Supreme Court is the one that flipped the switch down so that it will kill the thousands of people. Flipping the switch in this case has the trolley run over the Supreme Court or its members rather than the thousands of innocent people. But it's far from a perfect comparison. For one thing, it's too late. If the trolley runs over Scoutus, the rest of us are still screwed. It's gonna be a long, hard road to recovery, and I don't think any form of violence is likely to help. Another reason it's relevant to Pride is that queer people's rights are being taken away too. Queer people can get pregnant too. I am queer, but capable of becoming pregnant, and I'm with someone who's physically capable of getting me pregnant. I really hate how much LGBT people are left out of the abortion conversation. I really hate how much trans mask people are left out of the abortion conversation. Justifications aside, let's get into it a little bit. I can't get too into it, all the legal mumbo jumbo and stuff, because frankly, I struggle to understand a lot of the legal stuff. I tried to sit down and read the decision and I just, I couldn't get through it. There are other places to go for legal analysis. All I can really tell you is that the right to ban or protect abortion has been given back to individual states. Roe v. Wade had guaranteed that everyone in the country could get abortions up to the point of viability. Mississippi made a law banning abortions after 15 weeks. It was challenged. The Supreme Court's decision means that all these conservative states will be restricting and outlawing abortions. The consequences of this is not less abortions. It's more people dying from back alley and coat hanger abortions. It's more people dying because they can't get their ectopic pregnancy taken care of. It's people getting in legal trouble for suffering a miscarriage. This wasn't the only infuriating decision made by the Supreme Court this week. As I was writing this, I got word that the high school football coach I previously covered won his case. You can click the card for more info on the last video I did on it, but basically this guy was praying with his students before games, or maybe after, I don't remember, on the 50-yard line. It was a clear and blatant violation of separation of church and state, and Scoutus ruled in his favor. I'm sure attacks on the LGBT community are probably coming up next. The Supreme Court seems to be trying to force us into a full-blown Christian Christian theocracy and they seem to be succeeding. So that's fucking terrifying. Please keep track of local protests. I tell you to keep voting and you should keep voting, but at this point it's nowhere near enough on its own. I guess I'll say this. Do what you feel is appropriate. If you feel violence is appropriate, I really encourage you to reconsider. But if you reconsider and you still feel it's appropriate, I guess I can't even blame you at this point. I encourage you to follow the law and stay safe. But Sometimes civil disobedience is a must. Still, stay safe.
do what you gotta do. Hopefully next week's video will be a little less bleak, but I honestly doubt it. Things aren't looking good. On the bright side, we have this really funny cat video that might cheer you up. Phantom has always wanted to be friends with Oliver, but he's so awkward. This exact interaction has happened so many times. Oliver will be just chilling up there on the perch on the cat tree, and Phantom will want to cuddle, and he'll make his attempt by just laying on top of him, like, ass to face. Ollie obviously doesn't like this, but it sure is funny. I will continue to have adorable pet videos and photos to show you. I, I literally already have one for next week, so... Keep watching my bleak shit followed by cuteness. Thank you all so much for watching. Extra special thank you to my patrons who are listed right here. Extra, extra special thank you to my top tier spooky bitch patrons. Aaron, Junk Shop Library, and Nimbus Minx. If you would like to become a patron or maybe a top tier spooky bitch patron, the link to that is in the description below. We recently had a patron only live stream. That was a lot of fun. Um, only one person showed up. And that's the thing that's kind of fun about supporting smaller creators like this is that it's gonna be a smaller group and so you, you get to like get to know each other a bit more and like maybe next time three or four people could show up that'd be dope maybe next time two people could show up that'd be dope but the one person and i we had fun so make sure you like comment and definitely subscribe and as always stay unholy my friends